you want to breeze through the No Man's Sky Singularity Expedition, this is the video for you. This is a step-by-step -step guide to my speedrun route for this expedition with a few minor tweaks that take away some of the high risks that I will take to shave off those extra few seconds when competing against Jason, Biebs and the rest. This route will work very well for everyone, though Switch players may find a few small differences. At those times, however, I will note convenient alternatives. To start off, for those new to Expeditions, you will need a new save to run it. The Expedition is the game mode, so start a new save and select the Expedition. After initialization, you'll be in a harmonic camp, so just walk to the main terminal. This will be one of three or more different starting camps, so for this one, choose the second option and do the three simple math problems. Remember those three answers, then go back to the terminal main menu and select option one. Then choose the glyph that represents the answers for the three slots. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. After that, choose to unlock the multi-tool cabinet. Next, grab the multi-tool. Open your inventory and move your jetpack to one of the supercharged slots and have the B-Class upgrade touch it. Then have the S-Class upgrade touch the B-Class. Also move the life support main module to the other supercharged slot and have the life support upgrade touch it. Lastly, move the two hazard protection modules together. Before leaving the camp, walk over to the autophage in the tent to the right of the main terminal and unlock that the same way you did the main, working out the three answers and inputting them as a numbered glyphs in the slots, and work through the dialogue. Now collect the reward from the milestone you just completed, They Hear Us, in the Expedition's main menu. It's now time to head to your ship, but you will need to collect, craft and refine a few things along the way. You'll want at least 410 carbon. You should get this primarily from these small yellow mushrooms, but scan them first with your analysis visor so that you also get oxygen as a secondary resource. Next is 300 ferrite dust. Gather the dust from these flat rocks, and once again scan it first so that you'll get a bit of dihydrogen too, as you're going to need a fair bit. After getting the dust, you may wish to grab the three pods of one of these gaseous hazard plants. Then mine the plant itself to top up your oxygen. This will give you enough oxygen along with the secondary to both craft an item you'll need and keep your life support in check for the duration of the expedition. As for dihydrogen, you'll need 400, so I'd suggest moving toward your ship while scanning and mining the carbon and dust between dihydrogen patches. The last item is crystal sulfide. You need three of them and can find these attached to underwater heat vents. This starting planet has water, and two of the three starting camps will have it on the way to your ship. For the other one, you'll want to just land at the nearest lake after takeoff to quickly grab the three sulfide. For a summary, here is a list of the starting planet resources you need to gather. This is near half of the entire resources needed for this expedition, the rest we will be buying very shortly. Now for some refining. Fortunately, we start with the personal refiner, so open it and fuel it with 80 carbon. Then craft three carbon nanotubes in your inventory, and put all but 40 carbon into the refiner to turn it into condensed carbon. From now on, when fueling your refiner or mining beam, use the condensed carbon, as you need that 40 normal carbon later for crafting. After that's finished, refine 50 ferrite dust into pure ferrite. Now craft one metal plating, three dihydrogen jelly, one antimatter housing, and one hermetic seal. When you arrive at your ship, fix the launch thrusters and pulse engine, then take off, but don't yet leave orbit. Hold back on the controls to keep your ship from moving too quickly, and shoot the Atlantidium deposits on the ground until the milestone, the living void, completes. This requires 256 Atlantidium. Unfortunately, the Atlantidium is one of the last ground objects to spawn, so I'd suggest closely circling the area where you took off from, where the Atlantidium deposits are still loaded, and pepper the ground with photon cannon fire, being sure not to overheat, and eventually you'll get the complete. Now it's time to head into space. After the milestone triggers, use your ship scanner to reveal a waypoint in the direction of the space station, and pulse toward the waypoint. On the way, collect the rewards for the Wayfarer. Then charge your hyperdrive and install the teleport receiver. On approach to the waypoint, with any luck, it will not be super cloudy, and you'll see the archive near the marker. That's where you need to go. If you don't see it right away, fly to the marker and just hover, look in all directions until you see it. At the archive, interact with the main archive terminal in the back and work through the dialogue. Afterward, collect the rewards for etched in glass, then focus the pilgrimage one milestone. It's time for some warping, so head back into space and enter the galactic map. You'll need to warp four times to get to the first rendezvous system. 
As the pilgrimage one milestone is selected, you can either use the current mission or expedition path pathing options. So just follow those through the four warps. After the second warp, you will warp into a freighter battle. Head directly for the furthest freighter in front of you and carefully try to fly directly into the blue landing lights. Once you get close enough, it will open and tractor beam you inside. Walk your way up to the bridge and talk to the captain, choosing the second option, which is a reward for saving them. Do not accept the freighter itself. Once you arrive in the Rendezvous 1 system, head into the space station. Go straight to the Galactic Trade Terminal next to the Mission Giver. This is on the left side if you are in the station, looking down the runway. First, sell the cargo bulkhead and gold that you were rewarded with for saving the freighter. Next, buy this list of items at the specific quantities listed. We don't have the funds right now to buy all of what is stocked. After that, go to the other trade terminal in the station. This is located on the other side of the runway in the back room. From that terminal, buy the remaining three items. The unstable plasma is specifically for those who want to use a paralysis mortar when fighting sentinels later. Lastly, craft three launch fuel in your ship and three ammunition in your exosuit. This is about the only moment that a Switch player may have a little difficulty, as the trade terminals will likely not sell the same items as the other platforms. If not, the magnetic resonator and hydraulic wiring can both be crafted later by purchasing the blueprints from the space anomaly. The expedition rewards plenty of nanites, so this isn't an issue. The copper can either be found at other terminals or mined from the ground. Your original multi-tool has the terrain manipulator installed, so just switch to that when approaching a copper deposit. Cobalt can be mined from any cave. All of the starting camps have caves nearby, so just mine 360 cobalt and refine 350 of it to ionize cobalt. All other items in the lists are sold at all space station terminals. Now it's time to head to the first rendezvous location. On the way, while pulsing, put your 310 copper into the refiner. Craft one iron battery, then craft the construct head. Now collect the rewards for eyes to see and refocus a pilgrimage one milestone. Finally, install the advanced mining laser into your multi-tool. On approach to the marker, it should move location slightly away from you. If it does not, then look about 1500U or so to the west. If it does move, then it's 1650U northwest. From the second location, it is very easy to find. Simply look to the west of the marker and there will be a volcano very close. Fly to the right of that volcano and just after a mountain on your right, you'll see the harmonic camp on a ledge halfway up a large hill. Upon landing at the camp, unlock the main terminal using the code 51116. As these camps are the same for everyone from now on, I can give you the codes, so you don't have to bother with the second option math problems. Then choose to unlock the camp. This will complete the pilgrimage 1 milestone. Now head back up into space, focus a pilgrimage 2 milestone, and make the three warps needed to get to the Rendezvous 2 system. On your first warp, you will get another freighter battle. This time, and from any others you encounter, you can just fly in, then fly straight back out and carry on. If you wish to keep this save after the expedition, I would advise checking the class of the freighter, and if it is S-class, then accept it. If not, collect the reward from the captain, as those bulkheads will be nice for after you've finished. You'll also need to charge your hyperdrive after this first warp to continue. On arriving in the Rendezvous 2 system, head into the space station and while flying in collect the rewards for Pilgrimage 1. Go to the ship upgrade vendor and sell the suspicious hazard protection module you have, then buy both the C and S class hyperdrive upgrades. This is also a good opportunity to use a multi-tool exosuit and ship slot augments you just got to hopefully uncover some extra supercharged slots. If you uncover a supercharged on your multi-tool, then put the bolt caster in it. If you target this slot in your exosuit, then put your hazard protection in it. And if you uncover a slot in your ship, put your pulse engine in it and have the sail touching the pulse engine. Now refocus a pilgrimage 2 milestone and head to the marker. On the way, put 530 ferrite dust into your refiner. Also install both the C and S class hyperdrive modules in your ship and have the C class module and the main hyperdrive unit touching your S class module. On approach to the marker, you will begin to dread this one a little. Rendezvous 2 is the worst one to find in my opinion, depending on what the marker does. If the marker doesn't change or you can accurately get to where the first position was, you'll have a good time. Simply look toward the east and you'll see a huge mountain on your left and a smaller but still huge mountain on the right. Go through this gap between them, hugging the right mountain. Just around it, you'll see a small mountain in front of you with a sort of tiny twin peak formation with a very shallow dip between them. 
fly just over that and the camp is on the other side of that mountain, most of the way up. If you have to go from the second marker, it is roughly towards the southeast, and in that case I would advise finding it via coordinates. The camp is located at minus 20.28 by plus 77.42. I would not advise using the target sweep after landing. This expedition has solidified my disdain for the feature. Once at the camp, unlock and download the plans from the autophage using the code 2713, then collect the rewards from Pilgrimage 2. After that, get in your ship and fly down into the valley to the south of the camp and follow it roughly toward the south until you come to a narrow part of the valley. Just after that narrow part is a dissonant resonator on the right. Land near it and then place a base computer and claim it. We'll be using that base a few times later. Head up into space, focus a Pilgrimage 3 milestone and warp to Rendezvous 3. With the upgrades you installed, it should only be a single warp. Pulse directly to the Rendezvous marker and on the way refine 430 of the pure ferrite into magnetized ferrite, putting 100 of the previously refined pure ferrite in your inventory. Then collect the rewards from both to cast a shadow and the living void then craft the construct limbs, after which you should collect the rewards from hands to grasp, refocus the Pilgrimage 3 milestone and install the hazmat gauntlets. Rendezvous 3 is also a bit of a pain to find, these camps don't show up from scanning, so this expedition is a little more frustrating. If you can see an archive close to the marker you see, then head almost directly east for about 1750U. The camp is at one end of a field at ground level. If you are having trouble finding it, the coordinates are minus 15.18 by plus 67.25. At the camp, unlock the autophage and download the plans using the code 2813. Then select and load your bolt caster and wander into the field. Head over to the small cluster of radiant shards in the middle of the field and shoot all fauna you see on the way. Grab the three radiant shards and keep killing fauna until you have 300 mordite. Once you have 300, refine it to fecium. Then head back to your ship. Focus the Pilgrimage 4 milestone and walk to the Rendezvous 4 system. This will take 1 to 2 warps, depending on your RNG luck. On entering the Rendezvous 4 system, pulse directly to the marker. On the way, craft 2 life support gel and then the construct shell. Now collect the reward for the will to exist and refocus the Pilgrimage 4 milestone. Lastly, install the movement upgrade and if you bought unstable plasma, install the voltaic amplifier in your multi tool. This camp is a fair bit easier, especially if the marker moved as you approached. If it did, just poke your ship's nose over the hillside in front of you, which is toward the southwest, and head straight down the other side, as the camp is located at ground level at the base of that hill. Otherwise, the coordinates for the camp are plus 8.98 by minus 39.20. At the camp, unlock the download from the autophage using the code 41015. Then get back in your ship and start slowly flying to the north. You are looking for gamma weed, and if you fly near directly north of the camp, you will roughly follow the spawning lines. Fortunately, even when it storms on this extreme planet, the gamma weed is easy to see, as it's very bright. Just make sure to fly slowly, so the plants have time to load in front of you. You need to gather 600 gamma weed, so this is 2-6 to six patches, 2 if you only stop at large patches. Take into consideration proximity of radiant shards also, as while gathering the gamma weed, you should mine any nearby radiant shards, gathering enough to trigger radiance before leaving the planet. Once you've gathered enough radiant shards and the 600 gamma root, head to space, focus the Pilgrimage 5 milestone and warp to Rendezvous 5. Pulse directly toward the marker and on the way collect the rewards for Independent Spirit, craft two lubricant and then craft the construct legs before refocusing the Pilgrimage 5 milestone. On approach, if you can utilize the first marker location, then just head slightly east of north for about 1.5KU. Otherwise, the camp is located at plus 10.35 by plus 17.15. At the camp, do the usual autophage thing using the code 51116. Now head up into space, call the anomaly and enter it. While entering the anomaly, collect the rewards from Radiance, a shell to make whole, feet to roam, and then focus the milestone Grand Divergence. Lastly, craft the Atlantid Reactor. All you need to do here is pop up and talk to Nada, then head back out of the anomaly and warp to the system that is now marked. In this new system, pulse toward the marker, 
This one is a lovely break from the rendezvous markers, as the monolith you are here to visit is only 400 U west of the marker, which is just after it, and from how you will approach, you should be able to see it very easily. Land by it, then interact and charge the secret DHD. This is easy to find as the area is covered in an ethereal purple energy. Then interact with the main monolith terminal to complete Grand Divergence. Head back up into space and enter the anomaly. Talk to Nada again, and then after, talk to Polo. This has now started an 11 minute game time timer, before you can continue this quest, so we're going to finish some loose ends while this timer ticks down. The first step is to get ready for battle, which includes installing the two X-Class Hazard Protection modules you have, the S-Class Defense System upgrade, the Sentinel Class Exosuit upgrade, which will hopefully have shield on it, in which case have it touch the S-Class Defense upgrade, and if you purchased Unstable Plasma earlier, install the Paralysis Mortar and charge it. You may also wish to install the cloaking device. Now equip your bolt caster and use the Anomaly Teleporter to get back to your base. Once there, shoot the sentinels near the dissonant resonator, but try not to hit the resonator tripod machine itself, as this will instantly bump you up to 3 stars, meaning you'll have to fight more spider sentinels, and it will take longer to lose them after. However, if you can handle it, it may prove to be slightly quicker overall. Fight through the waves until you have 19 kills, and this does include those tiny spider sentinels, so always get those as they are weak and plentiful. The Rampancy Milestone will not trigger on screen while you are in combat, so check it every so often and try to count roughly. Once you have your kills, just run away. They are easy to lose and a cloaking device can help with this. Once they have forgotten that they hate you, get back in your ship and walk to the Atlas system nearby. This system will be marked and just below you in the galactic map, but if you wish, focus a prayer one milestone to get the path there. On arrival, head directly for the Atlas station. Once inside, talk to the Atlas, then craft the Seed of Dreams. Then talk to it again. Then craft the Seed of Power. Keep repeating this talking and crafting until you have crafted the Seed of Hope. You can now leave the Atlas station and call the Anomaly in just outside. While entering the Anomaly, collect the rewards from both Prayer 4 and Pilgrimage 3. This will trigger Cluster Horde. By now the timer should have finished, so talk to Polo again. Then go to the Teleporter Room and near the balcony side you should see a construct. Talk to it. Now go and talk to Nada again. And finally, talk to Polo again. Polo gave you a blueprint for a multi-tool technology, so build that. Then teleport back to your base. On arrival, use your analysis visor. The target sweep will direct you. Fortunately, you should be close enough that it will analyze from a distance, giving you a waypoint without having to keep the visor up. Head to that marker and use your scanner near it. This should pop two crystal formations into existence. Just mine them both to get two echo seeds. If you only see one, don't worry. Head up into space via pulsing and call the anomaly. An alien construct will appear between you and the anomaly. If you only have one seed, communicate with it to get a second. If you have two seeds, then ignore it and fly into the anomaly. Alternatively, you can just use the return to anomaly function on the planet to get back if you got two from the planet. Once inside, talk to Nada, then go to the back room in your teleporter room and interact with the terminal prime. Hand in both echo seeds and then retrieve an echo collective. Go back to the construct near the balcony and soothe it by giving it the echo collective. You can now choose which reward you want out of the two head customizations. Selecting the Atlantic reactor is one choice and the seed of hope is another. You could also pick one, then reload your restore point and do the last few steps since landing in the anomaly again and pick the second choice, which should unlock both on your account. And that's it. You completed the Singularity Expedition, and pretty dang quickly too. If this helped, please be sure to hit the like and maybe leave a comment to help with algorithm related things and share it with anyone you know who just wants to get it done. I'll be performing a slightly riskier but faster version of this run on Sunday, so if you're interested, keep an eye out at 6pm GMT.